Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about airfoils. I get this question a lot. A lot of people ask me um, what airfoils to use for their RC airplanes. So I decided to um, talk about that, how I go about doing it. And um, the way I do it, there's no math involved because again, I don't like reinventing the wheel. I just go with what I think um, um, will work. Now, when we look at um, airliners, like, um, you know, Boeing 747s, Airbuses, etc., cetera, um, we look at their airfoils and stuff like that. Now, the full-size um, jetliners, they use supercritical airfoils like the NASA SC-2 and um, Boeing uh, proprietary, uh, pri um, proprietary ones. And um, they're designed to delay the shock waves and wave and drag at transonic Mach numbers. So these type of airfoils will not work very well and will not work properly at all in um, RC scale models um, due to the low Reynolds numbers uh, way below Mach 0 0.3, the, um, the RC planes fly at. So um, using these type of airfoils like this one here, this SC20714 supercritical um, airfoil here, this will not work at um, for a um, RC model. So something that probably will work is this, NC, uh, NCA 23012. Now, the, uh, for an RC jetliners, the airfoils, airfoils are usually um, semi-symmetrical, medium thickness airfoils. And um, common choices to use for this and the one that's very popular uh, popular for um, RC scale transports um, is the the NACA 2412 or the 2414, and these are used for stability and for giving, you know, the, um, for stalls and stuff like that. Again, that's the 2412 and the 20, uh, 2414. So if you're designing an RC um, airliner. Um, those two are very popular to use. So if I'm designing an airliner to fly, that's exactly where I would start um, with the 2412 or the 2414, whichever meets the characteristics of my, um, my design better. And um, for that, then I would um, take those airfoils and put it into another um, design, excuse me, another software to see how they would um, actually behave. Also, another good choice for um, airliners, jet, um, RC jetliners, is the NACA 23012 or, or 23012 or the 23015. And both of them have um, sm um, smooth stalls, and they're good for larger, heavier RC airliners. So if you're building a really big airliner, um, those are the ones I would go for. And then um, if you're building something out of foam um, or something like that, you should go with the Clark Y airfoil, the Clark Y, and because it gives a lot of um, um, lots of lift and stability and um, flying around stuff like that. So yeah, so that's what I would use for an airliner. Now let's take a look at um, some warbirds and stuff like that. Now. The common airfoils that the um, Warbird would use would be a NACA 2412 also. And let me turn um, the airliner off here. Okay. Which is this one here, 2412. And um, another one is a 2414 or a 23012, or excuse me, 23012 or 23015, or an Epler 193 slash 197. Now, the shape of these are um, semi-symmetrical, moderate thickness of 12 to 15 percent. And um, at um, zero degree angle of attack, they produce no lift at all. And more forgiving, um, this type of airfoil is more forgiving at low speeds. And it has a, um, a gentle stall and smooth handling. And the drag is low to medium balance of scale appearance uh, with performance. And again, these are used in warbirds and sport warbird, warbirds and larger RC models. So this, um, again, if you're designing, designing a warbird, you should look at um, these type of um, airfoils here, the 2412, 24, um, 
14 and a 23012 and the 23015 on Epler 193 slash 197. Now these are um, really good for um, for that. So now uh, let's take a look at um, let's see. Okay, let's take a look at the 3D flying type airfoils. Okay, now the common type airfoils um, used in um, aerobatic type of planes, they are the, the NACA 0014 or the NACA 0015. Now these are very, uh, very, pop, very popular in pattern in 3D, air, um, 3D planes. They're, um, for their, they're very smooth and they're predictable. Now for bigger iMac planes, um, you can use a NACA 0016 and that's because it has a lot of strength and slow speed stability. And uh, for if you're designing like um, an older type classic pattern planes, the Epler 205 is a really good um, um, airfoil to use. And it has a smooth stall. So yeah, and um, if you're making something like an extra 300 or a Yak 54, then um, I would start out with the, the NACA 0014, 0015, or 0016, whichever one you decide to, um, to use, um, it's up to you. Now, for 3D planes, hovering, you know, Harriers, torque rules, etc., cetera, um, I'd start out with the NACA 0015 um, through the 0016 because that's, you know, the thicker symmetrical sections for better um, low speed lift. And um, giant scale IMAC often have uh, 14 to 15 percent symmetrical airfoils, and this is for um, um, you know tuned for smooth, slow rolls and snaps. So yeah, so those are some of those airfoils that are used with that. Now, again, like I said, I don't like designing, um, reinventing the wheel. So these are airfoils that I would use if I'm designing a type, um, any type of airplane. So if I'm going to design a jet. I would use a specific airfoil and stick with it and um, because um, they're very popular. Other designers um, have used them. Now, let's see here for jets. The, um, just looking through my notes here. Okay, for high-speed jets, um, you know, um, EDFs and turbines, um, they typically use a thin symmetrical or mild, uh, mildly reflect, reflexed airfoils that minimize drag at high speed. And um, the symmetrical airfoils, the NACA 00XX series is um, what you're looking at. So examples um, where I would start out at would be a NACA 0010 or the 0012 or thinner, 0010 or less, depends on what you're looking for, and to provide good high-speed stability and low drag. And um, they have no built-in lift, so angle of attack generates, uh, the angle of attack generates a lift, and um, good for aerobatics and inverted flight. The semi-symmetrical uh, semi -symmetrical or reflex airfoils like the MH-43 or the Epler 374, um, often use again these are used in jets and they need better efficiency and stability at higher angles of tech um, excuse me of attack and uh, reflex designs help reduce trim drag especially for flying wings or deltas and then the very thin sections high speed rc jets benefit from the airfoils six to ten percent thickness to core ratio since the thicker ones create too much drag at 150 miles per hour many turbine jets are designed with custom airfoils optimized in cad or um, cfd rather than standard naca profiles so <clears throat> if you don't know where to start with start with these um, um semi-symmetrical airfoils for a jet um the naca 0010 through the um, 0012 or specialized reflex airfoils. And um, so, yeah, so that's um, for the jet also. Now, if you go back and 
we start looking at um, all the airfoils here that I talked about, the key differences across um, the categories, we have, um, you know, the high-speed RC jets, the aerobatic planes, the warbirds, and the airliners. So, in summary, for high-speed RC jets, start out with the, um, the NACA 0010 slash 0012 or the MH43 slash 60. Now, for an aerobatic plane, start out with the NACA 0014, 15, or 16 or the 5803. And for war, Warbirds, start out with the NACA 2412 slash 14, the 23012, or the Epler 193. For a jet airliner, start out with the 2412 slash 14, or a Clark Y, or 23012. Now, um, let's look at, uh, for a high-speed jet with the airfoils, the lift at zero degrees. Now, for high speed, the airfoils that I told you about, um, the NACA, the 0010 and the 0012, um, those have um, zero lift at zero degrees. And the, um, let's see, the aerobatic plane, again, it does, um, doesn't have any lift at zero degrees. But the Warbirds and the Jetliners, they do have lift at zero degrees. So as long as you're moving forward, they have some lift. Now, the stall characteristics of the, the high-speed RC jets, the, the NACA, the 0010, 0012, is sharp, but it's very predictable. So um, you can predict when it's going to stall. Now, our aerobatic plane, um, the airfoils that I talked about, those are very clean and predictable. Also, you can pretty much tell when the airfoil is going to stall if you, you know, when you're going too slow. And again, the airfoils that I talked about um, with the Warbirds, those are very gentle and forgiving. So um, if it does stall and you use, um, use the NACA 2412 14 or the 23012 or the Epler 193, those types of airfoils are very gentle and forgiving. And um, jet liners, the stall is very soft. And um, again, the airfoils for high-speed RC jets, the priority of those is high speed, low drag, and aerobatic control. For an aerobatic plane, the main priority is neutral handling, upright and inverted. So if you're flying inverted, you want the plane to behave the same as it is flying um, upright. For warbirds, you want scale-like flight and lift at low speeds because a lot of warbirds are generally heavy airplanes, so you need a lot of lift. And jetliners, um, they're stable. Now, the Air Force are very stable and safe takeoff and landing and cruise, and they are, um, they are very efficient. So, um, yeah. But once again, like I said, these are very good starting points to um, um, start out. And um, once again, if um, you take this, um, these airfoils, you can use SimNet. And go in there, and um, the airfoils are there that I talked about. You can open up SimNet. And um, find that airfoil, and you have all the math and everything done for you there, so you don't have to do it if you want. If you really need to um, take a look at the math and how it's going to um, perform, but um, yeah. But anyway, that's how I go about selecting airfoils for the airplanes that I build. I don't. Um, again, like I said, I don't like reinventing the wheel. The math and everything is already done for me. And um, especially for RC airplanes. Now, if I were designing a real airplane, yeah, I'd do a lot more. But um, um, for RC airplanes, it's done already for you. And um, so, yeah. So I hope this video helped you and you're designing your wings with um, the type of airfoil you want to select um, there. And if you have any questions about this or anything else, let me know. And uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And um, I will catch you in the next video. Subscribe for more.